Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I'm here to talk about February 15th, League of Legends four-game slate. It's a, it's another four-game slate um, starting today. Um, we're going to be having four-game and five-game slates starting today until Sunday. So, you know, it's very exciting. So yeah, without any further ado, let's dive in. We have two games in LPL and two games in Korea. Um, I'll make, I'll go through some maybe like some metric key metrics like over under on kills, total kills to kind of measure the kill upside as well as the combined kills per minute metric um, to see, you know, uh, if both of these these teams um, or either of these teams and the and the in their respective matchups likes to uh, play fast. Um, increasing kill upside or vice versa and then let's see and then um, we'll make some match predictions based on some metrics and based on you know some eye test um, uh, context that that I would like to provide just after watching these teams the past couple months so yeah let's let's do that all right, so for over under, I typically use the um, Bovada to kind of see where the market is at. Um, AL looks like the odds actually have shifted a little bit. Uh, some people were betting on anyone's legend, it looks like. Reducing their odds as an underdog and then JDG about the same. They're the same. So that's that's always interesting to see because I posted these odds about three, four, four, four hours ago, I think. And then obviously the, the, they have changed. That kind of shows you where the market is leaning. Um, let's see. Kills. Under over. Let's see. 24 is where it's at right now. 20, no, 23, over 23 for the BLG game. That's pretty low for an LPL matchup. Um, let's see, for the JDG versus EDG game, let's look at 23 as well. Wow. Both are pretty low today. Let's see if we can distinguish them as they have the exact same over under. The combined kills per minute will kind of, you know, give us the tiebreaker um, on that. So we will go to that. In the meantime, let's look at the LCK matchups over under kills. But first, did the, did the odds change? The RX, yeah, they shifted quite a bit. Um, 310. Wow, it's quite a big drop right there. So people are backing DRX today, even though DRX has been one of the worst teams in the LCK. Um, Nongshim as well dropped a little bit. HLE the same. All right, that's interesting about KD, KT and DRX. So, all right, KT, DRX. 1920. Yeah, so 20 is DRX. That's pretty low as expected for an LCK matchup. And then Nongshim versus Hanhua Life is set at 19. Wow. That's really low. <laughs> All right. We were going to look at over under, and then now we're going to look at the combined kills per minute for these matchups to kind of measure the kill upside. So let's do LPL first with anyone's legend and Billy Billy gaming combined kills per minute. BLG tends to play a little bit faster, but the on average, it's set at 20 points. Why isn't this? Okay, um, point seven five or six BLG is the favorite, so I'll give it a little edge there. Um, BLG plays faster than AL. 
All right, let's look at JDG versus EDG. Oh, maybe I should just look at the matchups. All right, let's look. Let's look at the matchups since we're on it already. Uh, between anyone's legend versus Billy Billy Gaming. Um, as you can see, BLG has a really good roster this year with June. You know, you know how I feel about June. He's one of the up and coming uh, best junglers in the LPL, if not in the world. Um, coming over from Invictus Gaming this past off season, he's been really good. He's been the driving engine for BLG along with. Yeah, Gao. And Ben has been pretty pretty solid in the top lane, but I actually gave a lot of credit for June to June. Um and then Elk and On have been on and off <laughs> um in the bottom lane, but I think BLG overall has been pretty good. And then anyone's legend, just based on my eye test, I think Xiao Hao has been pretty good. And I like that Pins is starting in the mid lane. Um and you know how I feel about Betty. He is pretty good. And he has one of the highest kill share percentages in the whole league. And he was that he liked that last year as well. Um, I just think um he is a willing carry, um, where his teammates, the rest of his teammates, uh put a lot of resources into his ability to carry a game. And that's very important in this current meta. Um, I think you just need a good jungler and a good AD carry to be able to have a chance to win a game in this meta. So I think that in itself has a pretty good combo for anyone's legend, but BLG, you know, we'll see what the metric says, but I think BLG should be the favorite just based on the recent form as a team. But let's look at the jungle control percentage, which is one of the key metrics that I really look at carefully every matchup. Um, but BLG has a pretty solid um, metric advantage here. Um, Jungle control percentage. I'm gonna say BLG plus what is it? Four three point nine percent. That's pretty good. Then lane is about the same by one percent in favor of BLG. And then GSPD gold spend percentage difference, I believe. Yeah. Um BLG is that's another key metric that I uh kind of look at it a lot. Um I do want to see eight point no seven point eight percent um in favor of blg um i do want to look at their junglers respectively because i put a lot of emphasis in the jungling position and 80 carry position anyone's legend billy Billy gaming shao haojun both i really like these two players a lot um, it's unfortunate they're going against each other tonight. Um, but in terms of like earn gold per minute metric for each individual uh, jungler, um, actually it looks like June. So I'm going to say EGPM BLG jungler point. Uh, no, they he has an advantage of like 25 gold. Um, so that's pretty good actually for a jungler over 200 EGPM. Um, let's see how much they like to participate and help out their teammates in team fights. About the same. So, yeah, I mean, I think BLG, June has been playing pretty well, like I said. Um, I like him quite a bit. And every other lane, I think BLG should have an advantage there, in my opinion, maybe, except for AD carry. So let's look at that metric here for Betty versus Elk. I told you Betty is a willing carry, but it looks like Elk has actually has been playing pretty well as well. Um, actually, Elk has an advantage there. And then actually Elk has a high, very high kill share percentage this season so far um, compared to Betty's. So that's interesting. I want to see overall. Yeah, Elk is up there. Okay. Hmm. Elk and Betty, right? Elk is there. Betty is actually at the bottom. Wow. Well, that's actually making my analysis a little bit easy. I, I like um, BLG to win. <laughs> BLG wins two to zero. Um, yeah, so I was looking at look at looking for some metrics that may favor in anyone's legend to like give me a reason to see if they 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 can pull off an upset or they have any advantage in some areas where they can utilize and leverage to pull off an upset with. Uh, but it looks like actually BLG has dominated in almost 
well, all of the metrics, the key metrics that I look at carefully every matchup. So, um, and then, like I said, based on the eye test, I thought Betty um, would actually have better metrics than he has right now, but he's actually dead last at EGPM um, amongst the 80 carries in the LPL, which is very, very surprising to me, but you know, numbers don't lie. And, I don't want to, I don't, I don't like to dispute numbers. I am more data-driven and that, uh, analyst. So, you know, the numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. So I like BLG to win tonight. Um, I don't think I'll have any, anyone's legend, but I, I do think, you know, just given that they're the biggest underdog, I mean, they will be the lowest owned. Um, but in the, in an LPL matchup like this with high kills, potentially compared to other, Matchups, maybe anyone's legend is a good pick in terms of like multi multi entry GPP, just given the kill upside potential. But I mean, I just feel like all the metrics are pointing in BLG's uh, direction. So, all right, the next matchup is JDG versus EDG. Um, let's look at here what the team metrics look like. First, let's look at the CKPM metric to measure the kill upside is actually set at 0 0.80, so slightly higher than the BLG matchup. And like I said, BLG plays faster. So if you think AL kind of reduces the kill upside for BLG, I mean, this could even be lower than 0.76 and lower than 23. So I feel like JDG and EDG. This matchup, the second LPL matchup, is probably the golden matchup to target in terms of kill upside um, and higher ceiling in terms of uh, you know kill upside. So it's probably where I'm gonna where I'm gonna go. I think maybe play both sides, maybe just for that reason, just because the matchup has the highest kill upside. So you know that's another way of approaching these types of uh, DFS slates um, for League of Legends. But yeah, JDG versus EDG, and JDG has been playing really well. I think they ran into a little obstacle against Weibo Gaming, where they lost that series two to one. I think they should have won that series, but after all, Weibo Gaming played well. Um, the JDG did not play well, even though I think Kanavi and Ruler did their job, their parts. Um, it's the other other teammates. Um, that kind of, you know, pulled them back. Um and did not help the team win, unfortunately. But let's look at the metrics. Um, J, J, uh, jungle control percentage metric that I like to see. Um, first, let me kind of put this here. JDG plays faster than EDG. Um, jungle control percentage. Who has a higher jungle control percentage? Which, uh, in other words, mean that um, JDG actually controls the map a little better and more than EDG. 4.3% is actually quite a bit, um, but at the same time, ED JDG's is so good. And EDG's metric for jungle control percentage is actually not that bad. I mean, 52.6, anytime you're over 50%, that means you have a better control than the other team um, on the map, and especially in the jungle. And you know how it goes early game. The whoever has a better control of the jungle tends to make a lot more plays around objectives and ganks for the lanes and lane advantages and, and stuff like that. So that's a key factor in winning a League of Legends game. So that's why I look at that metric very carefully. And it's one of the biggest metrics that I look at in terms of um, helping me make a match prediction. So JDG is up a lot, and I wanted to kind of compare EDGs to the rest of the LPL, which is interesting. So you see, like, OMGs is the worst at 45%, not up 0.9%, and then EDG is up there as well. Like I said, JDGs is just, like, off the charts because Kanavi has been amazing for that team, but EDGs is not that shabby. You see, like, they're third number three you know overall in jungle control percentage so actually this 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 jungle control difference is actually you know i think it needs to be um understood with a caveat that edg is actually pretty good so i'm gonna put that jdg is elite 
but EDG is really good too. So I won't put that much emphasis on this, even though JDG has a pretty good advantage there and gold per, uh, spend percentage difference. I want to kind of see if any of those metrics pops out. Yeah, JDG is, I mean, like a, a double digit GSPD. That is amazing. Um, I do think this might be a bounce back spot for JDG after that terrible loss um, where they should have won that series, I think. Um, and then EGPM between Kanavi and GAJ. I want to look at that real quick. I assume Kanavi's is higher. Yeah. JDG plus 43. That's a lot. I mean, Kanavi's been lights out. Is it 63 or 43? Holy shit, 63. Wow. That's a, that's a big difference. Um, and kill share percentage, you see Kanavi's. Yeah, I mean, JJ has been kind of underwhelming in terms of like kill involvement and maybe putting pressure around the map. But I guess, I guess he does better job in the early game, but maybe he just doesn't do well in terms of like helping the team fight um, and around objectives. So maybe that's why his uh, numbers are not as good. But that is interesting that JDGs is so far superior to EDGs. Um, and like I said, JDG is coming off of a loss, which, you know, if you're an elite team like JDG, I mean, elite teams know how to bounce back and, you know, um, kind of, you know, put the put their best game together the next the next series. You see Wable Gaming beat them two to one. Um, but you know, JDG previously has beaten RNG, Anyone's Legend, and then just in pajamas, and then BLG, which was a very good win. So I think JDG should win this, but man, man, I, I'm trying to find the reason why EDG could pull off this upset. But other than the fact that they have a good jungle control percentage, but you know, I just feel like Ruler has been really good. EGPM is about, about the same. So that tells me Leave actually has been play, playing pretty well. Um, yeah. So I do think as long as like JJ does okay individually against Kanavi, I think EDG has a good chance. So maybe I'll play some EDG. But also because this, like I said, this match pr provides that big, uh, good kill upside. So I'm going to say. JDG wins two to zero in a great bounce back spot. Um, JDG has advantages all around the positions, um, but EDG's jungle control percentage X actually really good compared to other LPL teams and leave EDG's AD carry hit leaves stats are actually very much comparable to rulers JDG's AD carry oh man EDG. All right. Um, for EDG to have a chance, GAJ needs to do well early game against Kanavi. And then I'll put a little narrative here for BLG as well. All metrics are in favor of BLG. Betty's AD carry stats are the worst in EGPM in the LPL and June's much stats are better than Xiao Hao's. So advantages and Every lane pretty much and all metrics favor BLG.
All right. So, um, like I said, I think given the highest kill upside potentially in this matchup, EDG may be a good GPP play in MEE. Good. I mean, GPP play. So that's where I'm going to go in terms of GPP, I think. Um, in terms of LPL overall, yeah, I mean, I think both favorites are heavily favored to win today. Um, I think the underdogs do not have as good of a chance as the other underdogs in the previous games, I think. But who knows? You know, there has been an uh, an upset almost every night, it seems like. So, um, and the LCK, it's the DRX versus KT. So let's look at that. Where do I go for that? LCK. Um, KT versus DRX. I think DRX has been having one of the worst uh, LCK seasons that I've seen out of a team other than Fred and Breon um, in the past where they had not win any game, but their metrics were actually not that bad. I mean, they were all, they seem as like they were always in, in a series, but they ended up losing by some silly mistakes, but it looks like KT has an advantage of, let's see, 2.6%. So obviously that's not as good as like, you know, the other matchups in the LPL that I just talked about. So maybe that's why they think DRX has a good chance. But I, I mentioned earlier in the video that DRX's odds have gotten better. Um, so, and then let's look at KT has an advantage there, advantage there. All of early game, mid game, gold spin percentage. Yeah, I mean, all metrics favor KT, but not as much or drastic as you think. In terms of kill upside, CKPM, uh, on average, it will be 15, so 7.67, so we're six, 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 seven. let's do that. So it's still much like very much lower than the LPL matchups, right? So I don't know if that's a good matchup to target, but, you know, if you think, you know, if you want to put any of these two teams in the team slot, I think that would be a good thing to do um, just to kind of, you know, be different in your lineups. Um I do think in terms of the actual eye test matchup, um, let's see. Krako has been like really doo-doo. Um, but Cuz actually has not been the like a good jungler that you know that he is um this season. He and BDD have struggled um at times. And other in some in certain spots they look really good. But I think um this could be a letdown spot against DRX. Where DRX maybe this is the this is the spot where they you know show up and you know kind of put a good good game together. Um, as mentioned, it's not a huge like disadvantage in the jungle uh, position between Croco versus Cuz, and I know aiming has been really good and Keen has been better the last couple of weeks. I think Rascal actually has been the better top laner compared to Keen in the last couple of weeks. Um, and then Fate had been amazing. And Duckdom's form's coming back up. So I really do think DRX could pull this off. So I'm going to say KT should win as all metrics favor KT, even though they are not as drastically better than one would think. ERX could pull this off given the um, similar style junglers and their form, uh, their recent form, Fate and Duck Dom's form have been coming up. May neutralize BDD and aiming. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I think KT should win. So I'm going to say KT should win two to one. Um, I don't know why it's deleting that. Um, but anyway. So there's that. And then, like I said, kill upside is really low. All right, Nongshim versus Hanwha Life. Um, this over under was actually the lowest at night, set at 19. So we'll see what the metrics tell us here. Um, I did want to see between KT DRX just in case between Croco and Cuz if I see anything significant. So 190, 166. Overall, both are really bad. Uh, but it looks like Cuz actually has a pretty good advantage at plus 26. Maybe 24, sorry. Uh, my math has been off today. Um, gold difference. Yeah, I mean, Cuz has been having a better season than Croco. Let's just put it that way. So, all right. Let's look at the last matchup on the slate, which is Nongshim versus Hanhua Life. I do want to point out that combined kills per minute is set at 0. 0.61. Yeah, 0. 0.61, I think. Nongshim plays a little faster than HLE. HLE has been pretty slow. Um, I think they've been winning some games, but um, I do want to see. I'm sorry to go back before I forget. I want to see who plays faster. DRX plays faster. All right. Just to make my notes. Sorry about that. And then I'll go back to the last matchup on the slate, which is, like I said, Nongshim versus Hanwha Life. Hanwha Life should win this. I mean, just based on the eye test, like you see, I mean, yeah, Viper and Zika going up against the, the, the Nongshim Red Forces uh, minor league team, academy team, basically. Um, yeah, the context is that Nongshim... Did not sign anybody that in the offseason that was more of a higher name value. They just pulled, called up all the players that were playing together at the academy level. And now they've advan advanced or promoted. They've been promoted to playing in the LCK um, at a more competitive level. So the team chemistry should be there. But, I mean, are these players, do, do these players necessarily have the individual skills, respectively, to, to, to be able to lane against, for example, Zika in the mid lane and Viper in the bottom lane? No, I don't think so. Now and then, I mean, is the better t having a better team better than having better individually skilled players on a roster? I think it's a combination of both, for sure. Um, but I think in order to do that you need to have a really good jungler in my opinion that can carry you know a team like Nongshim but Sylvie has been very underwhelming I'm gonna I'm about to show you some stats um, that may open your eyes um, I just want to kind of point out that Hanho Life actually has a pretty good advantage here um, let's see at jungle control percentage Hanho Life is at plus 4.2 Four percent, so it's better than KT's advantage there in their respective game. Um, I do want to see. Let's see, Hanwha Life has an advantage there, there as well, and then better mid game, better early game, gold spend percentage difference, better there as well. Um, so yeah, Hanwha Life should win this, but let me see if actually Cled actually has been kind of underwhelming. But Sylvie actually has been underwhelming as well. I mean, like 178, 175, that's not great. But, you know, still, like, Khalid has an advantage there. Um, but maybe, yeah, like, Sylvie actually has an advantage here at goal difference and XPD, XP difference at 10-minute mark. Um, so maybe Nongshim can pull it off. But, I mean, I don't think so. I'm just trying to come up with the reason why um, Nongshim could Maybe the this this metric is very interesting. Maybe Clid will just have a shit game, and maybe Sylvie will, will you know feed off of that, um, and then help his team snowball. But will that happen? I don't know. I I don't think so. Um, hmm. 
let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think HLE should win this. I mean, two to zero. I want to see what who they played against. Yeah, that one, Kia, Bro, and DRX. Yeah. I think losing to that one, Kia, is fine. I mean, HLE did not really have any chance there. But against an inferior opponent, I mean, you saw, you see Hanwha Life beat Fred Brian, whom I think is similar at the similar, similar level as Nong Shim's. Um, like it, in terms of like the individual skills of those players on the roster, um, DRX two they've always gone to three games. It seems like. All right, spring two to zero, three games, two games, three games, three games, three games, three games. So I do think going up against Nongshim. Who's been about the same team as Bro? I think it's gonna be two to one. Um, all metrics point to HLE's direction, but Clint does not have good, uh, good key. Early game and mid game metrics. Sylvie could pop off um, at the expense of Clit's bad plays. But at the end of the day, the individual skills of HLE players are so, so, so much better than Nong Shims. Including Zika in the mid lane and Viper in the bottom lane. And in terms of kill upside, as mentioned, this is really low. Um, so maybe KTDRX is a better matchup to target in DLC for LCK. But overall, like I'm just looking at the whole slate as a four game slate. I think you kind of have to focus on the LPL matchups just like you do probably any other any other slate. So it is going to be like any other slate. Like I said, I think I'm only on BLG, not anyone's legend. But I, I do think anyone's legend makes a very interesting GPP play given that they're the biggest underdog. Um, so yeah, and then I think JDG versus EDG has the highest kill upside in my opinion so i'll play a lot of jdg and i think i'm gonna have a little bit of share sprinkle of edg here and there along with kt and drx maybe in the team slot i do think drx you know has a little bit of advantage here and there but kt should win this matchup um but i do think you know the uh, kt's metrics are not as are not that much better than drx's let's put it that way um, I do think their jungler are the matchup is about about the same. Um, in terms of HLE Nongshim, like I said, the last matchup, I think HLE should win. Um, they've gone to a lot of uh, game threes, so maybe HLE is going to win two to one. Um, but this kill upside is so bad that I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I would not touch Nongshim just based on the kill upside. The lack of kill upside thereof, actually. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. It's been it, it was a little longer than expected, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please please hit the like button below. Um, hit the subscribe channel. Um, I have to hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and yeah, watch watch videos about other sports. Have a good one. Good luck out there. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.